Right, how are we doing, everyone? I'm super excited because this is the first Fishing with G show that I'm doing on YouTube, and I am super, super stoked about this. I've been thinking about this for a very, very long time. Basically, I was sort of thinking to myself, you know what? I sit there every single night when the kids and the missus go to bed, and I scroll through social media, and I just look at shit the whole night, and I thought, you know what? I reckon I can produce content that is as shit or maybe even a little bit less shit than what I'm looking at. So here we are. I'm in my shed. I've set up a beautiful studio. I've got the equipment all running. What I need you to do is I need you to go to YouTube, search out Fishing with G, subscribe, and then once you're subscribed, you can put a comment. Now, when you put a comment onto the YouTube video, it then comes up onto my computer screen here. I can see your comments. I can reply to your comments. I can involve you in the show, and we can create this beautiful community focused around the Fishing with G show. If you don't subscribe, you cannot comment. I can't see this. You are basically out there somewhere like that peeping Tom behind a curtain watching the show. Get involved, go subscribe and like the show, people. Now, in this show, I'm going to be covering my challenge for 2024 of just using one set of fishing equipment to try and catch as many different species as I can. More of that to come. And I'm also going to be inviting my friends onto the show, some of which are really interesting people. Some of which are not, but they just catch some big fish. But um, no, in all seriousness, you know, I know loads of people in the industry. I've been fishing for you know, 30, God, 37 years, something like that. Um, I've had the privilege of representing my country, so I've met people all around the world. And I thought, why not, you know, whilst it's cold outside or late at night, I can basically sit here through the modern technology. I can invite people onto a live stream and we can have a good old catch up. We can share a nice cup of coffee or tea or alcoholic beverage if you are over the age of 80. And um, yeah, we can basically catch up people. But what I need to do is whilst I want you to also go and tell your people on social media, Twitter, Twitch, whatever those new ones are, tiki tiki talk. Um, go and tell them this is live. Go and tell them to go to YouTube and subscribe as well because I need to get my subscription up and I want to get this community going. So pop a comment down. Oh, how many people have I got? I can actually see. I've got like 20, 22 people watching this live. Ha! I thought I was the only sad person uh, at this time of night to be sat here and uh, doing this. But hey, welcome to the show, people. Make sure you're subscribed. Drop a comment on that comment thing. Drop a comment. Right. Now, what we're going to do is every show we're going to put together a theme tune because the show needs a theme tune and I'm too tight to pay for royalties for music. So I'm just going to make it myself. Bought this little 505 machine uh, about a couple of months ago. Oh, I'm not a musician by any stretch of the imagination, people. But you know what? I freaking love this little 505 machine. So what we need to do is let's get there we go. So we need to get a little drum beat going, don't we, people? How about that? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Ready? Oh, we've got a little drum beat going, yeah? Let's put a little, tss, tss, little snares in. There we go, right. I can see some comments coming through as well. Keep it coming, people. Where's my egg? I need my egg. Aha! Egg. We need an egg, people. There we go. Right. Get me that. There we go. We've got the egg in. Should have a bit of bass going in. Let's have a bit of bass, people, shall we? Oh, don't want that one. What we got here? Hang on. There we go, a bit of bass coming in. All the levels doing bass. Turn that down a bit. There we go. That's Matt. Here we go, producer Matt. Look. <laughs> I'm recording this little live demo. Matt is on there. Right. There we go. It's got a little bit of this on. Hang on. There 
Oh, I need to redo that, people. Because mine needs to get up. Here we go. We like that. How are we doing, people? What have we got in the comments here? And there we go. We've got some people coming through. G, good to see you on the screen. Thank you very much, mate. Andrew from Romania. I'm coming to see you this year, bud. We're doing a competition. Right. Well, so we need to put a little, um, put some of this on. Put a bit of this on, shall we? We need some lyrics, people. Any TV show needs some lyrics. What am I doing? There we go. It's fishing with G. Come fish with me. If you like what you see, subscribe, subscribe. It's fishing with G. Come fish with me. If you like what you see, subscribe, subscribe. It's fishing with G. Come fish with me. If you like what you see, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe, subscribe. Right, people, we have got a show going. I keep on looking down here because that is the screen that I'm looking at, but really I'm thinking about you out there, people. Right, what have we got? There we go, first part of the show. Right, we've got the challenge update. Have you subscribed? It's fishing with G. Come fish with me. If you like what you see, subscribe, subscribe. <laughs> That's enough of that nonsense. That's enough of that nonsense. I do kind of like it though. Mm. Let's bring it down like that in the background, shall we? Right, welcome to the show. Sorry it's taken so long. I've got no idea how long that's taken. Probably about 10 minutes of your life, but hopefully you enjoyed that. The RC505, it's brilliant fun. I'm 43 years of old, never been into music, but that thing there, loads and loads of fun. I'm just using my uh, my iPad with a bit of garage band on there. You can put up all these funky little, um... you can play it from your iPad. It's cool. Right, okay, so the challenge, what is the challenge of 2024? Right, so what I'm going to do is, let's just fade this out here. There we go, let's stop that. Let's get all serious now, shall we? We'll get a cup of tea. Let's do a tell. I'll tell you a story. Right, so basically, people, I was sat around pretty bored most evenings, right? I've been a carp angler for most of my life. Done lots of other course fishing as well, a bit of trotting for grayling, roach, um chub fishing a bit of lure fishing drop shot him that sort of stuff but basically when i moved to brighton um i started to get to know the guys down at hove lagoon 
Now down there, they're a fantastic bunch of people. And I started working in there, did a little bit of part-time work actually. Um, and it opened my eyes to sea fishing and just to sort of like how great our oceans are on our doorstep. And, you know, the beach is five minutes away from me. And I started to sort of think about sea fishing. But what it ended up in is I ended up going and buying, um, like a lot of anglers out there, you know, equipment. You know, I, I know fishing. I know that having good equipment helps me as an angler. But I ended up with so many rods, people. So much kit. Like, for real, man. It was like a problem, Yeah. Um, I had it all racked out. I had everything all organized, but I don't know how many rods I've got or had like 75 rods, something like that. But you know, just to give you an example, I ended up having, uh, like big beach rods with multipliers on them and bearing in mind the, I'm talking top end with top end reels. Yeah. I'm not talking about like car boot sale stuff here. I'm talking about like the very best, um, yeah, a pair of big beach casters, multipliers, a pair of continental beach casters with fixed ball reels. I had Chupatini boat rods with quiver tip sort of sections on them, a pair of those. Uh, I had heavy boat rods. I had uh, a light telescopic Chupatini boat rod. I had boat lure rods. I had bait caster rods. I had um, top water lure rods. I had drop shotting rods. I had three light three other light lure rods as well um again all kitted up with like state-of-the-art reels and stuff i had barbel rods tench rods 13 foot carp rods 12 foot carp rods 10 foot carp rods stalking carp rods i had uh six foot bank creeper carp rods i had float 13 foot three piece float rods i had power float rods i had 15 foot trotting rods um you know loads of stuff just and the list goes on. Like fly rods, I pipe fly rods. I, I, I can't even fly fish people. I pike fly rods like with loop reels on them, and I had like you know all this bloody five weight fly rods. I can't, I can't even use them. Can't, I can't fly fish. Um, I was just getting a bit too much. And anyway, what was happening uh, was that I was just oh, and the other thing to add as well is that all of that equipment they had specific bags like I was like right to make it easier to go fishing each of those ones had to have a specific bag I'd like 14 different bags people yeah I'd like my specialist kit my river kit and my carp kit my stalking kit my floater kit and my beach kit my boat kit my like um yeah my fly kit my pike fly kit like all of them had like little bags all with their own scales and all with their own scissors I had 14 different pairs of scissors people I'd like eight different pairs of scales it's like this is getting too much and what's happening is before I was fishing it was just sort of like, what do I go fishing for? What kit do I need? What shall I put into the van? And it was just becoming a bit like a bit too much, a bit of a faff. And the other thing as well is that through my job at the Angling Trust, I was traveling around to all these wicked parts of the southeast. I finished work at five o'clock and I'd be like, oh, you know, maybe I'll go down on the beach show and have fish or the pier or, you know, have a go on this lake or something or this river. Um, but I didn't have the right kit with me in the van. You know, I just didn't have the kit with me. It was all back in the uh, in the lockup. So what I've done anyway is, that's me enough of me rambling on. I have gone and taken all of my equipment and put it into a container, right? And I'm not going to touch that for the whole of 2024. Only thing I've kept is a set of ST10. So from South Coast Rods, they're 10 foot carp rods. I've got a set of ST10s and one of their 10 foot U-tool rods, right? Which is their like heavier spawning rod. And I'm going to see how many different species I can catch with those rods, right? Um, I'll show you the equipment in a, in another episode. I'll get it out and actually show it to you and, and go through the rods and the reels. But basically, yeah, I've got the, the South Coast rods. Rods, I've paired them up with some like, um, and I won't spoil the surprise because I'll go through this with you on another on another stream. But basically, uh, I've paired them up with some indestructible reels that would take both salt and fresh water. All right. Um, you can drop a comment actually if you want and let me know what you think those will be, but uh, you might be surprised. But yeah, so I've gone and paired them up with some indestructible um, rods and reels. I've got my bite alarms. I'm going to take them to the beach, people. I'm going to take them to the beach. All right, I'm going to see if I can make them work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my experience of course fishing and put it into all of these other areas of fishing because I think I've got the knowledge. I know how to catch fish. You know, I know how fishing works. I know how to catch them. And to be honest, quite often I think I'm getting bamboozled by, um, you know, all this modern day stuff and bits and pieces. And at the end of the day, you know, it's like when I coach, I've been a fishing coach for 15 years. You've got to get the fish feeding. If the fish is feeding, you can catch them. If they're not feeding, you can't catch them. So it's a case of just making sure you've got the right rigs, the right bait, nothing too complicated, in the right spot, at the right time, and you've got a good chance of catching the fish. So I'm going to go around and meet my friends that are far and wide. They're going to pass on their expertise. I'm going to go fishing with one set of kit, 
Now, the hardest part has been, hardest part has been, is sorting out the actual tackle box. Because the rods and reels, you might be thinking, okay, gee, right, you're going with some carp rods. Yeah, I can go and do that. I can take my carp rods down the beach and catch a bass, right? Yeah, you can. You can. However, what I've done is I've stripped back all of my kit to one tackle box, all right? One tackle box. Just think about that. In fact, I'm going to show it to you. Stay there. Stay there. Don't go anywhere. Right. In fact, let me lift it up, right? This is my new fishing box for 2024. Drum roll, please. Uh, can you guess what it is yet? I don't really want to be going out, do I? Right. Look at that, people. Look at that. Hey, for you car piece, you might be like, what the freaking hell is that? That, my friends, is my old shaky seat box with the old uh, backrest bit on it, so you can use it as a rucksack here. So you've got a strap seat, you carry it as a rucksack. I've got inside, I've got the side trays that go on there like this. Ba -da -da -da. Little bait trays on there. And I've got my alarms inside there. I've got my tackle box inside there. And I've got three of the quarter uh, pouches inside there. I'll do a close up in another video or you'll see in another video. But inside there, so there's all my tools that I'm gonna need. And again, everything. Hang on, let me get this out. Let me get this out. Put those there. Put those there. I need to sit down. This is gonna get too much too excited for me, people. Right. Ah. There we go. Right. Oh. All of my end tackle is had to go into here. All right. Now, yeah, the spools of lion and leader and uh, the weights and stuff like that, they're inside the seat box there. But da, 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 have you ever seen a quarter box look like this? I don't know if it'll pick it up, but there we go. Let me see. I'll just look at my screen there. There you go. I've got my lures inside here. I've got like my needles and stuff inside here, my scissors, my hooks inside there. Inside here's all my sea hooks. Got some of my braids inside there. I've got my uh, my clips here, my Gemini lead clips for the quick releases for when I'm beach fishing and stuff. Um, yeah, beads up here. Look at those bright beads. All the carp anglers are screaming. Going, ah, I see neon beads. Um, got those up there. Got all of the stainless swivels and stuff. And yeah, and basically, um, this is my tackle box, people. This is my, this is going to do me for 2024. Um, now, oh. Uh, now, what I will say, oh, I've got a, um, let me go and get that to just show you as well. Oh, hang on, people. Don't go anywhere. Now, what I also have is I have this uh, lightweight cool box from Nash. Thank you very much, Nash, for sending this through. Really appreciate that. Um, wicked lightweight cool box. And then that straps onto the top of the seat box. So that goes onto there. I mean, that is my power barrow, my UK uh barrow conversion straps they go through there that straps on the top so it sort of sits like that so i've got like my cool box for my food if i'm carping and stuff or my brew kit or if i'm taking bait or some fish home and things i can go inside there sits on top of the seat box happy days and then i've also got one of the um sort of more heavy duty of carp green uh cool boxes which are really really good that stays inside my van so if i catch a fish i can bring it off the beach on that it's quite lightweight put it into if i am going to keep it if it's a nice bass or something like that, that i'm going to keep uh, or some mackerel um i can put it inside a cool box in the van and then um yeah get it back to my freezer later in the day so yeah there you go um right now when it came to the kit it sounds like it's quite easy to strip your kit back but actually there is so much involved in it that you have to keep thinking well if i put line for instance you know like you're thinking, well, what line do we use? If I put if I put braid on, that's fine for certain types of fishing. But then some venues I go to, I'm not allowed to use braid. So, but if I put mono on, then that won't suit me going out on the boat. Um, and that is another thing as well, people, is that I've actually got a um, what do I call them? Sibs. So I've got a three meter sib. My friend Andy Lobel got me into this. Big up to Andy, you're an absolute legend. Um, Andy got me into this. And basically, it's an inflatable boat. I've got a 15 horsepower engine on the back of it, which absolutely motors people. Like this thing is like a rocket ship. Um, and again, I just wanted to stream. I did oh, last year. I went and bought a um, like a dory style boat, but I put it in the water like five times. People like it was on a trailer. It's a lovely little boat. Got it for a bargain of a price. Dan, my friend now, had bought it off me. 
cheers Dan you will love that boat and that's not me being sarcastic you're going to absolutely love that um but why did I sold that and I've gone and bought an inflatable boat that I can chuck in the back of my van with the motor and I can travel around the country um and then get out there in a float and I'm gonna go and see my mate Andy Lobo up in Yorkshire we're gonna go and catch some tote might even go back up to Scotland see if we can catch a skate off the inflatables but there's all sorts of exploring and adventures that I can go and have and I think that's what I'm craving people you know I'm, I'm, I'm craving just a little bit of exploration a little bit of adventure with inside my fishing um and also reconnecting with my friends um i'll be completely honest with you people uh in uh you know i'm 43 i've got two young kids um and i've got the lovely anna but life isn't what it used to be when you're younger and you've got the um the privilege i suppose of being able to go around and do what you want when you want and a lot of my time especially where i work from home i work with the angling trust i'm in the office a lot you know in my my shed here doing my work um, i run south coast rods with Stu as well big up south coast rods you know like i work work on that with Stu as well um but a lot of my time is like in isolation in this shed um and i just thought if i could do a youtube channel it would allow me it would, what it would do is it will put in the diary dates i'm going to go and see my mates right so it might be like i'm going to go see mark williams down in southampton and we're going to go see fishing on his boat yep in the diary or i might be going up to andy lobel in yorkshire and visiting him and we're going to go tote fishing in the sieves or i'm going to go to romania and see andrew and do a fishing competition which i will be doing in september um so it's allowed me to sort of like to really focus and be like no there's a reason for these fishing trips and it is important for me for like my mental health and well-being and and that sort of stuff um and you may be saying well graham you're cuckoo anyway for doing this youtube thing because youtube is, has been and gone it's all about tickety talk um you're probably right people you are probably right but you know what i really don't give a shit um because i'm not doing this to get rich i'm not doing this to um i'm doing this for me I'm doing this for me and for you guys out there that actually are sort of like following my journey and and taking interest in what I do, you know? Um, so if you do, subscribe. Yeah? Hang on. Hang on. It's fishing with Jim. That's right, Come people. Fish Come fish with me. If you like what you see, subscribe. subscribe. <laughs> I'm going to keep throwing that in all day. Right, okay, so... That is the challenge update. Um, drop a comment in the comments here if you can guess what reels I'm going to be using along with my South Coast Rods ST10s. Be interested to see if you can guess, people. Um, and also, yeah, drop a comment as well. What do you think the hardest bit of equipment to pick was with regards to to think about? Because remember, there's all sorts of stuff that you've had to that I've had to think about. Um, and it'd be interesting to see what your thoughts are and what you would pick. Um, but yeah, that's about the challenge update. I will go on to the next bit of the show now. Um, actually, no, I won't. Because before I finish challenge update, what I will do is I'll just tell you that what I'm going to be planning to do is every time I do one of these live feeds, I'll update you on my challenge. But there will be separate videos made of my like more... <laughs> my more interesting trips um so yeah so if i'm going out and fishing like for for skate or something with lobe or going out um shark fishing or something ridiculous like that on my little carp rods um i'll film that and put it as a separate film so you'll be able to see that these live streams and the fishing bits will be in two separate films or well or i might chuck some bits in between but i'm not quite sure people and that's the beauty of this it's my show do whatever i want and you might notice i said f in there rather than the f-u-c-k right because let me tell you about this right Come a little bit closer. There's this evil little thing called an algorithm, right? Now, this algorithm thing, what it does is it comes out and it like climbs into your computer and it like trolls through all the things that you're saying. And if this little evil algorithm thing, if it likes you, it tells everyone else about you, right? If it doesn't like you though, you're basically blacklisted. No one gets told about you. It's like I'm sitting in the shed talking to no one. Yeah, Billy, no mates, right? So we have to be careful of the algorithm, people, all right? We've got to pet that little algorithm, feed that algorithm all the nice little stuff that it wants, and then it will allow G to get out there and talk to all the other anglers around the world. But if you don't like, if the algorithm doesn't like us, people, we're screwed, all right? So we do have to be a little bit careful about that little mean algorithm crawling around, picking up on the old F-bombs I'm going to drop every now and then. But anyway, right. That's enough of me. Right, what we've got next? Oh, do you see that? Did you see that little slide that popped up there? Okay. Technologically advanced me. Right, special guest. Today's special guest is 
there isn't one um i'm afraid because this is the very first one uh the very first show that i'm doing and it's pre-recorded just so i can test out the systems and stuff but there is no special guest, uh, but there will be special guests coming up. I've got some really cool people lined up for this show. I've got people like Bev Clifford's going to come on the show. Um, I've got Brian Byford is going to come on the show. I've got Rob Greening is going to come on the show. I've got Lewis Swift. Um, he's going to come on the show as well. Um, not Taylor Swift, I'm afraid, but I'm um, working on her. But yeah, Lewis is going to going to be joining. Um, yeah, and then and then loads of other people have uh, have hinted that yes, they will come onto it as well. And a few of those ones are rather interesting people, I shall say. Um, but I'm looking to also they were carp anglers, but that's because that's mainly my sort of um, or community that I've been involved in. However, I am hoping to get like Brett Lomas from um, Lagoon Bait and Tackle, good friend of mine on to the show to have a chat with me now he's um, an england boat angler and an awesome sea angler he'll be very interesting to get onto the show um and a few other sea anglers that i know as well that i'd like to get onto the show pick their brains um and a few other people that are completely maybe even some people that are unrelated to fishing um or that you don't or that are anglers but are maybe known for something else like musicians that are anglers or something like that. But, you know, drop a comment down there. Drop me a comment. Um, I'll go through those later on. And if you want to see someone in particular on the show, I can always uh, try and get in touch and give them a bell, see if they're available or see if they are washing their hair. We all find out. But, yeah, that's no, going to be good. I've got some really good guests lined up. Um, the whole idea of this is just to basically get them on have a bit of banter with them, um, ask them a few sort of like questions and just have a chat with them. Because, you know, I'm sitting in the shed, people. I just want to talk to my, talk to my friends, basically. And if you've got any questions you want to ask them, you can pop them into the comments. I see those and we can ask them those as well, uh, as long as they're appropriate. And um, yeah, we can take it from there. So we can create a really nice community. So got a lot of special guests lined up. Um, I say no one's on today because this is the first show that i'm doing basically um and this is a pre-recorded one so this is a live show this one here um sorry it is it's semi-live if that makes sense so i've got a few people that are popping up some uh messages on here that are already friends of mine i've sent them a link to but the majority of you won't be able to find this because it is a recorded show anyway enough of that we are testing the systems people testing the systems right what else have we got the next part of the show so when my special guests are on one of the things i'm going to ask them to do is did you like that? Yes. Is uh, we have got our big ups, bruv, big ups, bruv section, which uh, is kindly sponsored and supported by Nash Tackle. Now, the guys at Nash, some of the nicest people that I know in the industry. Um, so I want to give them a little bit of shout out. But this one here, big ups, bruv. Basically, in this section of the, uh, the show, we give the opportunity for our guests to raise awareness and to put a shout out to someone or a project around the country that is doing amazing things for angling now through my role at the angling trust and also through having uh, run four life experiences for you know for 13 years and seeing the benefits it has to people of getting them into angling i thought it was really important to put this into my show and just to basically like give a pat on the back to those people that are out there doing it um you know not your social media um what's the word you know, that are going out there just posting lines pitch, but actual people on the ground in the pouring rain, freezing cold, getting out there, getting money, introducing people every day with a smile on their face to fishing to make sure that there is fishing for the future. That's what this section is about. And I am going to start this one off. So, you know, on the on the big ups, bruv, right, I'm going to give a massive, massive big ups to, um, to a, a man, um, one of the nicest men you'll ever meet, and that man is Tom Oliver. Um, now, Tom actually came to work with me at Four Life Experiences. He was fresh out of Spa Shoal College. Um, he came to work with me. I think he worked with me for seven years, but he was coaching and introducing people of all walks of lives. Yeah, youngsters, adults with learning disabilities, people that were uh, struggling with alcohol and drug addiction or homelessness and stuff. Um, and the general public as well. But every single day he was out there come rain or shine, always with a smile on his face, always putting the graft in. He helped create FLE, as it was known, for life experiences. But that fishery and what we did there um, couldn't have been done without Tom. You know, it, it honestly couldn't. And he, he was a godsend to that organization. And if you 
worked with Tom, if you had the privilege of going down to FLE and seeing Tom or working with him or anything to do with the FLE community, please do just pop, pop a comment on there. But, you know, I thought that starting this show out, the first person that I really wanted to give a big ups to was that man, Tom Oliver. So thank you, Tom, for all of your hard work. Um, I know you're not in the fishing industry now. You've got a beautiful uh, family. Um, lovely Jen there with uh, with, with your lovely, um, lovely kid. Um, and I think soon to be another one as well, which will be the best Christmas present ever. So I hope that goes well. And uh, yeah, I hope your family has the most amazing Christmas tea. Um, but yeah, thank you for all of uh, all of the work you put in there at FLE. Um, so yeah, so that's the way the Big Ups Bruv is going to work. Can we have a bit more coffee? You'll probably notice a thing going through this, right? Is that I quite like the caffeine. So, and also, like, I don't want to make this... A glass of wine or a beer or something because i don't know where this podcast will go um live stream whatever it is so i got my coffee but you will find i do bounce around a little bit like a um a pogo brain from here there and everywhere normally due to the amount of caffeine that i drink people to be honest uh right so next bit is we've done that one there big ups bruv that was tom oliver this week next one we have back of the net sponsored by south coast rods one of the best rod brands out there. If you haven't checked out South Coast Rods, go to their website, southcoastrods.com, and, uh, and have a look at their rods. The ST range is amazing. I would say that because it is my company. They're my fishing rods, and they are honestly the best that you will be able to buy. We sell direct to the customer. That is you, meaning that you pay less for the premium rods, and we're creating this beautiful community. But now that's my little plug, done my little shield. Honestly, go check out South Coast Rods if you haven't. But this part of the section is when our guests, it's called back of the net, our guests talk about one capture, one special capture that made them, when it went into the net, they gave out that Danny Fairbrass, you know, that go on, get in, get in, yes, get in there, go on, yes. One of those ones, yeah, the back of the net. Um, but yeah, what was that capture? Yeah, we've all got one, haven't we? We've all got one. The one that stands out for me is... um. When I went over for my 40th birthday, up to Rainbow um, with the, the legend that is Rob Green and who will be coming on this show. And um, I, don't know, I think it was the last day, Big Fish Friday or something, or it may have been on the Thursday. I think it was on the Friday. We'd had a really tough week. I think I'd had two small fish. Rob was blanking. I was fishing very, very hard. Rod went off, had this epic boat battle um, and up popped this like 67 pound mirror. It was absolutely amazing. And to, that was around a COVID time as well. And we could just travel after COVID. So having gone through COVID, um it being my 40th having not been able to get back to rainbow since i was 13 years old i went there when it's only been open for three months um and then being invited back there and to have that fish that was just that was unbelievable but that would be my back of the net tail people all right and i'm probably obviously going into a bit more detail and stuff if i was on the show but i'm not going to bore you with that because maybe i'll talk about it in a in a future episode with rob i don't know i don't know um right next up we have got, yes, uh, every day is a school day. So that one there is, I thought it'd be interesting to ask our guests. What is the one thing that they have learned in fishing or in life, I suppose, that they could pass on to us out there that has really helped them out um, with their fishing or in life, but just every day is a school day. Yeah, you learn something new every single day. Um, I'm trying to think what... Uh, what I would do on this. Do you know what? Actually, I did get taught a very, very good lesson, actually. I went a couple of years ago, I went up to this runs water um, with a guy called Pete, Pete Rodbuilder. He took me up on a guest water, a uh, guest ticket. And it was quite a quite an easy lake, lots of fish inside there. Quite shallow. And I went up there and I was basically fishing, um, uh, spotted some bait out and I was fishing Ronnie's over the top of it. And I had a few fish. But he absolutely schooled me, people, right? And what he was doing, and I haven't got anything to sort of demonstrate this, but he, was, he basically had um, a helicopter set up come down, right, with an inline lead at the end of it, of the helicopter set up, with this, like, um, mesh bag clip at the end of it that you sort of put the knot of the mesh bag through and pull it down, and it basically clips on. And then he had a short little uh, rig that he then hooked into the mesh bag that was underneath the lead, right? Um, since then, I've been told that people use this sort of like a maggot rig that people use when they're using mesh bags rather than solids. But what it allowed him to do is he had about 40 of these pre-tied little bags of pellet. And he was literally swinging the rod in, catching the lead, clipping the mesh bag on, like literally just clip, and then chucking it back out again. 
it was it was so quick so quick and he schooled me absolutely schooled me like i don't know how many fish he had but it just he could fish like what was basically like a solid bag because he had these the mesh bags weren't little ones that you put on your hook you know they weren't like little ones you put on your hook these were like dirty great big mesh bags like this yeah like sort of like orange size right but he was able to just sort of like get the knot of the bag that he tied just slip it through pull it down it clipped onto the clip hook his um the hook into the side of it bang out it goes onto the rest you'd be getting winding the rod in it would go absolutely amazing and every day is a school day people so i went out and bought some of those clips do you know what i went up to the boat pool um on a guesty when i went up there uh boat port horton and i thought i know somewhere that this this would work fished it up there first cast at the biggest fish in the lake out the old two-tone uh common i think it was about 44 pounds but that was on that rig um yeah uh so every day is a school day but when i first saw it i was like literally chuckling to myself just being like <laughs> yeah all right mate yeah all right mate that's gonna work for you isn't it bud um but it did it absolutely works true so there you go every day is a school day so we're going to ask our uh, guests about that and then the final thing that we're going to do is oh we've got the oxford research project now with our guests, I've been contacted by my friend, Dr. Peacock, over at uh, Oxford Uni, and he has asked me to do a research project with my guests. And I've got about, I think he sent me over about six or seven questions that I've got to ask them, and they've got to decide whether it's one or the other. Now, apparently what this does is it all goes into a like personality, personality type indicator sort of machine, and they're trying to find a correlation between top anglers and the answers to these questions to help them identify uh, future top anglers uh, quicker and if there's a certain personality type that is drawn towards angling. So I'm going to help out uh, my mate Drew over there at uh, Oxford University and I'm going to be asking these questions for part of the Oxford Research Project to my guests and they have to ask, answer them honestly and openly. I will record that and then feed the findings back to Dr Peacock at the uh, at the university so that is what i'm going to do people that is what i'm going to do but anyway that is enough that's a little bit about my uh my challenge i've waffled on now for 37 minutes that's more than enough of your time um i've got a few of my friends that have got this link here what have you what are you saying D -d 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 -d. just go through your comments here people let me have a little look here oh you're being very kind people very kind my friend andrew here is saying gee Awesome. Studio looks great. Can't wait to follow. Um, what have we got down here? Ben. Looking good, G. Can't wait to follow this show. Perfect. Make sure you've subscribed. I know you've subscribed, people, because you're on there. But if you're watching this recording, make sure you've subscribed. Yeah, go to my YouTube, Fishing with G. Make sure you subscribe. Um, yeah, a few other comments on there, but I'm not going to read them out because, as I say, this isn't an actual live stream. This is a recorded stream that I'm going to put up there just because I'm testing this software, testing the systems, making sure that everything is working okay. It seems to be working perfectly, which is great news. And I will be back on the next show with a special guest. So on that note, let's just bring in our little theme tune, shall we? There we go. Right. So we're going to end the show with our theme tune coming through. Get a little bop on. Hopefully you've enjoyed that, people. I've really enjoyed it. I think it's been great. I can't wait to get out there, do some fishing with my fishing kit. Go and catch all different types of species. We've got taupe. We've got stingray. We've got bass. We've got undulate rays. We've got carp. We've got pike. We've got bream. We've got tench. All sorts of stuff that I'm going to go and try and catch. Will I catch them? I have not got a clue, people, but I'm going to try. I'm going to film it all on this lovely little GoPro. I'm going to make some movies. We're going to do some live streams. We're going to have some fun, and it's going to be a really, really good 2024. So I'll leave you with this, people. Have a fantastic Christmas. Have a great New Year. Next show should be around about um, start of January, sometime like that. Look forward to seeing you then, people. Peace out. <laughs>